Good morning, faithful listeners. You have tuned in to the P40 Ministries podcast, the one place where you can get a daily explanatory Bible reading to start your day strong. This is your host, Jen, bringing you a brand new episode out of Matthew. Hey guys, you have tuned in to the P40 Ministries podcast. Thank you so much for being here. This is your host, Jen, and today we will be talking about Matthew chapter 12, verses 30 through 37. But before we begin, I need to apologize to everybody. (laughs) So last Thursday, when I did another podcast episode out of this chapter of the Bible in Matthew, I said towards the end of the podcast, I said something about how blaspheming the Holy Spirit is considered to be a sin that is unforgivable. And I was like, right after I said that, I was like, but I don't know where that's at. I I can't remember what chapter of the Bible that's in. Well, if I would have read down two verses, (laughs) I would have seen it right there. But of course, I did not do that. And sorry for that, you guys. Of course, in my defense, I was thinking about the one in Mark. And I think that one is in Mark chapter three. I actually looked it up, but um, we will be talking about blaspheming the Holy Spirit today and what that means and why Jesus considers it to be an unforgivable sin. So turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 12, verses 30 through 37. And I will be reading out of the NLT version of the Bible this morning. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. So I tell you, every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which will never be forgiven. Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, either in this world or in the world to come. A tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. You brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. So a couple months ago, I talked about the scariest verses in the Bible, and that was what I named the podcast episode. And those verses were in Matthew chapter 7. But to me, I think these right here that I just read are some of the scariest verses in the Bible. But before I really get into that, I want to start talking about verses 30 through 32. Jesus is talking about neutrality, people who are fence sitters. He says, people who are not with me are people who are against me. And there's a verse in Revelations that talks about lukewarm Christians. You know, the fence-sitting Christians, the ones who kind of want Jesus because they want to get into heaven, but they're the type of people that don't want to do anything with their free gift of Jesus and pretty much don't live like how Jesus tells Christians that they should be living. Jesus, once again, is talking about these neutral people who are not necessarily for Jesus. He says, anyone who is not with me is against me. So people that are not walking with Jesus are people who are walking against Jesus. And this makes sense because if you're not walking with Jesus, you're not going to understand anything from the Bible and you're going to tend to do stuff that the Bible says is wrong to do. People who are neutral towards God are not for God. If they're not working with Jesus, they are working against Jesus because they don't understand. They can't possibly understand. And so Jesus is calling out these people that are fence sitters, lukewarm Christians, or people who are not Christians but say that they're not against Jesus 
but in actuality, they just, they really are. After this, Jesus goes on to talk about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, and this is the scary part to me. He says, anyone who speaks against the Son of Man, or Jesus, can be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, either in this world or in the world to come. So this is a big, big statement that Jesus says here. A lot of people get scared because they're like, well, what if, what if I am blaspheming against the Holy Spirit? Like, how do you know if you've blasphemed against the Holy Spirit or not? I remember one time I was uh, at a school function and there was this group of kids there that some of my friends were also friends with. And of course, I wanted to be cool and I was really stupid at the time. And everybody in that group, including some of my friends, started making fun of eternity and making jokes and cracking jokes about the Holy Spirit, just honestly doing really weird stuff. And I promise you this legitimately happened. And I was sitting in and I was kind of just laughing along with everybody, even though I knew what I was laughing at was wrong. So I'm going, ha 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 ha. But then, you know, a week later, I was really, really terrified because I, I knew enough at that point of the Bible to understand what I had done was wrong. That was definitely a sin I did, for sure. That was a sin. But when Jesus talks about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, I don't believe that it's that kind of a sin that he's talking about, though that was a sin. What Jesus means when he says people who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, those are the people who fully reject the Holy Spirit. Those are the people who through their entire lives, call Jesus and his testimony and call the testimony of the Holy Spirit lies. That is what Jesus is talking about here. The religious leaders who Jesus is talking about were honestly close to doing this if, if they haven't already done this because they had already blasphemed the Holy Spirit because Jesus was using the Holy Spirit to cast out these demons but the Pharisees were saying that Jesus was using sorcery and things of Satan, basically, to cast out these demons. They were crossing the line into blasphemy pretty badly. So Jesus says here, if you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit, who is causing these demons to come out of these people, then you are not going to be forgiven. This is an unforgivable sin. You cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit and be forgiven. And Jesus even goes on to say, in this world or in the next. So this is an eternal sin. So even though I was sitting there laughing about stuff that I shouldn't have laughed about when I was a kid all those years ago, I wasn't really blaspheming the Holy Spirit because even back then I had a heart for the Holy Spirit and I was so sick about what I did. I'm, I'm telling you, up until probably like a few years ago, I was so sick about that because I was like, I blasphemed the Holy Spirit, but I didn't because I love the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit inside me. I believe in the truth of the Bible. And the Bible was given to us through God's Holy Spirit. If you believe in the truth of the Bible, then you are not blaspheming the Holy Spirit. It is only the people who say that the Bible is filled with lies and the Bible is not of the Holy Spirit and fully reject the testimony of the Holy Spirit. Those are the people who are not going to be forgiven. So though I did sin all those years ago when I was making fun of stuff I should never have been making fun of, I did not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. So hopefully if you've gone through something similar, this eases your mind a little bit. Now moving forward, and I don't know how much I want to really get into this, but I do also believe that people who blaspheme the Holy Spirit honestly don't want to be forgiven. They are the, the type of people that don't care, truly believe in what they are saying, and they're not going to be forgiven, mainly because, firstly, they don't want to be forgiven, and secondly, they're so far away from believing in the truth that God's just going to let them live it the way they want to live. But I'm not going to get too far down that path because that's not really what we're talking about today. But basically, blaspheming the Holy Spirit 
in Jesus's words, is an eternal sin. And there are eternal consequences to the sin. And so we are supposed to regard this very seriously and not blaspheme the Holy Spirit by saying that the Bible is filled with lies or saying that the testimony of the Holy Spirit is filled with lies. If you desire Jesus and you desire what God has to say and you have a heart towards the Father and towards Jesus, then you are not guilty of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. But if you continually reject Jesus and the, what the Holy Spirit has to say, and then you are hardened against Jesus himself, and that is the sin. You are hardened against the Holy Spirit, and that is why this is an eternal sin, because you do not accept Jesus as your personal Savior, and you don't think that you need a Messiah. Once again, this is all a sin of the heart. You know, I, I never realized how much Jesus talks about the heart until I started doing this podcast. It's insane to me how almost every single thing that Jesus talks about involves the heart. How if you harden your heart against God, against the Holy Spirit, and against Jesus, that is the eternal sin. But if we change our hearts, we are not blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. But Jesus goes on to say here in verse 33 that a tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, the fruit will be good. So in other words, if the tree is healthy, the fruit is going to be delicious and the fruit will be healthy. But if the tree is unhealthy, then the fruit will also be unhealthy. And this is talking about us. You know, whatever is in our hearts, we will produce good fruit depending on if we have healthy hearts. But if we have unhealthy hearts, then we won't produce good fruit. Jesus talks a lot about producing good fruit. He talks to the Pharisees once again. And he says, you brood of snakes. How could evil men like you speak what is good and right? And this is kind of tying into the whole tree producing good or bad fruit. He says, whatever is in your heart determines what you're going to say. And a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. So in other words, a, a person who is healthy produces healthy fruit. But an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart, or they produce bad fruit. And Jesus says in verse 36, I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. Now an idle word. I'm certainly guilty of idle words, that's for sure. An idle word is a word that does not produce good things. It's a word that either produces nothing or a word that does not give grace or understanding or produce peace or love towards other people. And man, am I guilty of idle words, especially when I am driving down the freeway and somebody cuts me off. It's not a joking matter. <laughs> so Jesus is saying like any idle word that you speak, any idle word you speak, you are going to have to give an account for them on the day of judgment. So this is a warning to everybody that we should not be doing idle talk such as gossiping or yelling at people in traffic or um, you know anything else that we might be guilty of when we are talking about things that are just not good for example that um, that thing I was just telling you guys about when I was in that group of people who were making fun of eternity you know that was I was part of that and I should not have been doing that and I'm gonna have to give an account someday for that on judgment day but this is a warning to all of us to not do this in the future don't say idle words then you won't have to give an account for them on the day of judgment so this is a warning to us to not do this and then Jesus concludes by saying your words will either condemn you or will justify you so depending on what you say to people and about people and about Jesus and about the Holy Spirit, those words will either condemn you or they will justify you and you will be saved through Jesus Christ. So friends, I know this was a heavier part of this chapter. I was having a little bit of trouble researching this one because 
there's just so many different things that people believe with this um, with this portion of Matthew. So I was having a lot of trouble, but I hope I made it clear enough to understand at least the gist of it. But friends, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. Join me on Thursday and we will be finishing out Matthew chapter 12. We will read to the end of the chapter and be done with Matthew chapter 12 and move on to Matthew chapter 13 next Tuesday. Now, tomorrow, of course, I will be once again back in Genesis. I do a Genesis podcast episode on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for those of you who are new to the podcast. And that episode tomorrow will be at 6 a.m., so definitely join me then. Go to my website, www.p40ministries.com, and take a look at everything that I offer there on the website. I have quite a few things that I do on the website. So take a look at that. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy listening and God bless.